be here. When I left Yerevan, it was summertime. And I came to Harazdan and it's cold. I will know better next time. We've been coming to Armenia for 17 years. I don't know if I've shared my testimony of how I got to Armenia. Have I said that here? Well, 17 years ago, my friend, Marty Huff, was an Assembly of God missionary. And he was a missionary in Belarus. And he was asked if he would consider coming to Armenia. And he said he would. But in America, missionaries have to travel and make acquaintances and raise support to bring them to the foreign field. So during that year he decided he and his wife felt like they wanted to stay in America and plan a new church. So he was faced with the task of coming to Ar Armenia and talking with his superiors and letting them know he had changed his mind. During that time, his wife had another engagement and she could not come to Armenia. So I told him I would accompany him. I would come to Armenia with him. And in Sakazor, they were having a conference. And so I came to Sakazor. Yes, And I had to come by Harazdan. The road goes by Harazdan. So I said, Hi, Harazdan. Hello, Sakazor. Only one time was I coming to Armenia. Yes, and But about the second day. Of the conference, the Holy Spirit was moving in a mighty way. And I, it got my attention. I began to see how God was moving on the people. And we were just drinking in the presence of the Lord that day. You know how it is after you've been in a dry spell. And the presence of the Holy Spirit comes in and you begin to drink and satisfy your soul. And during such a time as that, they open the altar for prayer. Is this water out of a fountain? Yes. You think I'm tough enough to drink it? Bless this water. And so during that morning, as they opened the altar for prayer, I saw a man, I later learned he was a pastor. 
He came down the aisle with his hands raised and tears coming down his face. God was touching his life. And I heard a voice say to me, join yourself with that man. I'd never seen this man in my life. I was just a visitor in Armenia. I was only coming, I was only coming to Armenia just one time. And now I feel something say to me, join yourself with this man. And it was so strong, I thought someone behind me was talking. It was that strong. So we stayed in Sakazor for a few more days. I didn't tell anyone about the experience that I had. I wasn't sure what experience I had. And then that Sunday, as Pastor Luke Yagnazar, and you all remember, you all know Pastor Luke Yagnazar. God bless Pastor Luke, a great man of God. He was sending pastors to different churches. And Marty Huff was supposed to go to Savan and preach in Savan. But there was a conflict of some sort and the pastor said, I'm sorry, I can't have him today. And so at the last minute, Pastor Luke said, I'm sending you to Vanazor. And so my first trip to Vanazor up through the mountains. It's a beautiful ride. It's beautiful scenery. It's like the mountains where I come from in Kentucky. We have a few more trees. But it's the mountains, it's beautiful. And so we finally arrived at the church. And there was only four cars. Now you have to bear with me, I'm thinking like an American. And in America, if you go to a church and there's only four cars there, you can say there won't be many people here today. Americans don't do a lot of walking, they do a lot of driving. But to my surprise, when we opened the door, the building was packed. There was no seats left. And if they had not saved seats in the front for us, we would have to stand up. So as we made our way and we sat down. And just like here tonight, as the music began, as the worship began. God's presence was very evident. It was a wonderful experience as we experienced the power of the Holy Spirit touching our lives. I didn't know anything about that church. I didn't know who the pastor was. I was just a visitor. I was enjoying myself. I was coming one time. 
In a few days, I would pack my bags and I would fly back to America. I would say bye bye Armenia. Hello America. And then they introduced the pastor. And to my surprise, it was the man that walked down the aisle. And God said, join yourself with that man. That was 17 years ago. Wanda and I have been back to Armenia over 50 times or more. God has enabled us to be involved in different projects and building churches and in, in, in scholarshiping students and helping the ministry. And they asked me, are you coming back to Armenia again? And each year I say yes one more time. One more time. Because God has placed it in my heart so strongly. We've had opportunity to go other places with our ministry. But it seems like God has placed this country in our heart. I've got a key to an apartment now. I have a home in Armenia. Actually, it's Samson's, but he lets me use it. <laughs> you feel yourself. <laughs> it's amazing what God will do with your life. If you will stand still and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, He will direct your life. The Apostle Paul talked about the calling of God on his life. In Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to have Liana read verses 13 and 14 for me. When we give our life to Christ, you know, to repent means to turn around. You're walking in one direction. Something happens in your life. And you turn around. You don't go that way anymore. You don't do those things anymore. You don't think about those things anymore. But you turn around. You have a new goal. You have a new desire. You have a new vision. And Paul said, I don't count myself that I have apprehended. I'm not there yet. But this one thing I do know. Forgetting those things that are behind. And reaching forth to the things that are before me. God wants us to forget the focus of the past. He says, set your treasure not on things here on earth. But set your treasure on things above. 
where rust and thieves cannot corrupt and break in and steal. God wants us to think about the future and focus on heaven. He wants us to forget about the fears of the past. God wants us to forget about the failures of the past. Has anyone experienced a failure? Has anyone dealt with fear? Has anyone dealt with doubt? Yes, we all have. And God understands that. And God knows that. But he wants us to forget about those things of the past. Forget about the mistakes. We simply have to say, God, forgive me for my failure. Forgive me for my mistake. And his grace, which is sufficient, is able to cover all of our sin, all of our failures, and all of our mistakes. God wants us to focus on the future. I believe God wants us to somehow forget about the victory of the past. You know, if we dwell on the victories of yesterday, we may miss the victories of today. The children of Israel did not want to go over the Jordan. They had received a report. There are 12 spies that went. 10 came back with a negative report. Oh, those people are giants over there. Oh, we're just grasshoppers. We can't go over there. Let's, let's stay here where it's safe. But Caleb was what, 40 years old, 45 years old? He and Joshua said, no, we can take the land. Let's take this land. But we understand because of the unbelief of the other ten they marched for 40 years in the wilderness. But when God took Moses, Moses upon Mount Pisgah, and Moses could not go in the promised land. Because he said, do I have to smite the rock? God let him see it. But it was Joshua that took him into the land, into the land of promise. What did Caleb say? He's now 85 years old. And he came to Joshua. He said, I want my mountain. I haven't forgotten my mountain. I don't want to stay back here. But I want the victory over there. I want the experience over there. I don't want yesterday's manna. I want the freshness of today. I want the challenge of tomorrow. And so today, my friends, if the Holy Spirit moves in our life, let us look toward the future. There are many adventures ahead of us. There are many opportunities waiting on us. There are souls that need to hear about Jesus. Some folks ask, when are you going to stop? 
My family talks to me and says, you know, you're not as young as you used to be. Age is just a figment of your imagination. When the passion and the fire of God burns in your soul. When you hear the call of the Holy Ghost saying, go, go. Someone needs to hear the word of God. Someone needs to know that God loves them. So Paul said, I leave these things behind me. And I, I press toward the mark of the prize. Of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm moving forward with a purpose. Yes, I don't want to stay where I'm at. As the Holy Spirit speaks to my heart. I want to move as he touches me. I understand the spirit of this church. There's a mission spirit here. There's a calling here to take the gospel into the darkness. And I think that's why I can relate with what you all, the spirit that you all have here today. The countries around Armenia are full of darkness. They don't worship Jesus. And in all the darkness around you, you possess the light. You possess the anointing. You're a small country. But you have a big heart. This is a small land. But God dwells in this land. And with Christ Jesus, I can do all things. And I believe the hour has come. I believe the day has come for the Armenians to take the gospel to the surrounding areas. Not only Turkey, but to the north, to the east, and to the south. And people may say, why do you want your enemies to prosper? Why do you want your enemies to be saved? It's the love of God. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that's able to change, able to set free, able to do more than anything that we could do. God's love is big in our heart. So we move toward the heavenly purpose. It's a race that we're running. We're getting close to, to the finish. It's not time to stop now. God refresh us. God give us strength. Let us continue to run. He will meet our needs. He, he will protect us. If we send our sons and daughters into the mission field, God will protect them. God will provide. Because it's our job to take the gospel to the world. A heavenly purpose. Much higher than anything that we can accomplish here on earth. All the silver. All the gold. 
Voskin, Vochchatsatha. All the fame. All the notoriety of this world is just a fleeting thing. But heaven is real. Heaven is for eternity. The earth may pass away. But Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. I want to go there, don't you? I want to go there. I want to spend eternity with him. But when I go there, I want to see individuals who I didn't understand their language when I was here on earth. I want to see individuals that were different than I was here on earth. I want to see them in heaven. And I want them to say it's because of you and your testimony that I'm here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reward, folks. That's the great reward. When we get there at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the table is spread. There will be lavash on every corner. There will be barbecue all over. <laughs> and we'll have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And your journey is going to be worth it. So, are you coming back to Armenia? Yes. Ayo. Yes. Ayo. Yes. Ayo. One more time. I feel the spirit of evangelism. I feel the spirit of go ye forth. Take the gospel into the darkness. I want to be a part of it. I want to have my name written in the Lamb's book of life. And when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ and I offer the works that I've done, I don't want wood, hay, and stubble. I want silver and gold and precious stones. And you know how we get that? Winning souls. Winning souls. Making the gospel available to the lost. Taking the light of the Holy Spirit into the darkness of the world. Yes, Lord, help us to continue. Help this church. So this church is called Rebirth. Rebirth. Born again. To walk in the newness of life. To let the gospel light shine. To those around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want more of him tonight? Do you want a refreshing tonight? Praise God. You are welcome in my heart. Heavenly Father, Spirit of God, come into my life. I've been a Christian for 62 years. 
I received Christ when I was 10 years old. Yes, Christos in and tunnel and yer plus tarikane. 62. But soon yer ku tari. And 10. Yes, thus. 62 and 10. But soon yer ku yer thus. Make 55. But soon yer sonot. So I'm still a young man. Yes, there yer thus hat martem. But the joy of serving Jesus. The joy of fellowship with the saints. You know, sometimes I want to go to church, pastor, and I don't want to go home. I just want to stay at church. Now I know I can take the Holy Spirit home with me and he I fellowship with him, but there's something sweet about the fellowship with the saints. Because there's strength in unity. When I have a challenge. When I have a battle to fight. And it seems like my strength is leaving me. If I can get to a brother. And if we can join hands. And as we pray for each other, and the Holy Spirit comes, and He begins to lift us up in His presence, the fellowship with the saints is as sweet as can be. And if you think it's good here on earth, Wait till we get to heaven. We won't have this old carnal body to contend with. We won't have any aches and pains. We'll look like Jesus. We'll have a glorified body. Our fellowship won't end. We'll fellowship with him throughout eternity. So whatever your challenge has been this week, whatever you face this week, let me encourage you tonight. Let me encourage you tonight that God loves you. Don't look at the mistake. Move away from the failure. Walk into his grace. Walk into his love. And let the Holy Spirit meet every need of your life. James said, pray you one for another that you may be healed. I want, us, I want us to stand to our feet tonight.